Good morning, everybody. It is April 5th, Wednesday, 2023. It is 9.06 in the morning. Okay, so this is a part three of chapter two. Same kind of different as me. Now that client was divesting herself of both a gold digging husband and the O'Keefe's. The new buyer, an elegant 50-ish woman who owned one of the finest apartments on Madison Avenue and probably wore pearls while bathing, was also divorcing. She was hosting a luncheon for me and a couple of her artsy socialite friends that afternoon to celebrate her new acquisitions. No doubt an inheritance to the philosophy that living well is the best revenge. She had used part of her King's Ransom divorce settlement to purchase the O'Keefe's at nearly double their former value. She was far too rich to negotiate the $1 million price tag. That suited me just fine since it made my commission on the deal and even $100,000. My client had sent the falcon down from New York to retrieve me. Inside, I stretched out in a buttercream leather seat and perused the day's headlines. The pilot arrowed down the runway, took off to the south, then banked generally, gently north. On the climb out, I gazed down at Fort Worth, a city about to be transformed by, a local, by local billionaires. It was much more than a facelift. Giant holes in the ground announced the imminent construction of great gleaming towers of glass and steel. Galleries, cafes, museums, and upscale hotels would soon rise to join banks and legal offices, turning downtown Fort Worth from a sleepy cow town into an urban epicenter with a pulse. So ambitious was the project that it was systematically displacing the city's homeless population, which was actually a stated goal, a way to make our city a nicer place to live. Looking down from 3,000 feet, I was secretly glad that they were pushing the bums to the other side of the tracks, as I despised being panhandled every day on my way to work out at the Fort Worth Club. My wife, Debbie, didn't know I felt quite that strongly about it. I played my novu elitism pretty close to the vest. After all, it had been only nine years since I'd been making $450 a month selling Campbell's Soup for a living, and only seven since I'd bought and sold my first painting, secretly using stealing Debbie's 50 shares of Ford Motor Company stock. A gift from her parents when she graduated from Texas Christian University. Ancient history, as far as I was concerned. I had shot like a rocket from canned soup to investment banking to the apex of the art world. The plain truth was God had blessed me with two good eyes. One for art and the other for a bargain. But you couldn't have told me that at the time. To my way of thinking, I'd bootstrapped my way from lower middle class country boy into the rarefied atmosphere that oxygenates the lifestyles of the Forbes 400. Okay, so that's all for part three, chapter two same kind of different as me. Thank you for watching.